What is our intention? What is our intention? You know, imagine if we could say, you know, to our, our family or to an outside observer, you know, with respect to my family, well, at least I live in the house with them. Or at least I feed the children. Or at least I pay the bills. Or what if we said to our employer, listen, at least I show up to work. At least I don't call in sick. Or if we say to our doctor, well, at least I'm not taking medications that are bad for me. Or at least I'm trying. Or we say to our trainer at the health club, listen, at least I come to the club. At least, at least, at least. As opposed to saying, at most. You know, to minimize it. And I will often hear people say, you know, when we talk about different issues regarding our worship, do you participate in the Mass? Listen, Father, at least I come to church. Do you dress appropriately? Listen, at least I come to church. You know, do you uh, come in on time or leave early? Listen, at least I come to church. We have to be very, very careful when talking about God, that we do not include that other word, at least I. Because when God showers his goodness on us, it is always with extravagance. And so when we talk about God, and in the same phrase echo, at least I, then we are no better than Cain. And we remember that the offering of Cain from his last fruits were not accepted by God. It's why in scripture, according to the law, we are always supposed to give the first fruits of what we have. We're supposed to give the best lamb we have for the sacrifice, not the one with two legs that chases his tail all day, or the one that's blotched, or the one that's sick. We're supposed to give the first fruits of our grain and our corn, not the one that has succumbed to the fungus that we can't eat, so we give that one over or not the one that was stamped down by the oxen, so we give that. It was important that we give the first fruits. However, I think sometimes we just don't do that. That if we have time for God, okay, I'll utter a prayer. At least I utter a prayer. That if Mass is not inconvenient for me, then I'll attend during the time that I can. Well, at least I, I attend Mass. Or we'll come at Christmas time or Easter because those days are more important than the other Sundays of the year, which incidentally they are not. They're equal to the Sundays of the year. But we will attend those and we'll say, listen, I at least attend twice a year. At least, at least, at least. In the gospel today, it's the, the miracle of the loaves and the fishes. It's one of the only stories that's in all four gospels. And when they approach this problem of feeding all these people, who is it that comes forward? A little kid. It's no accident that Jesus says to us, you must become like little children. So whereas there might have been other people there, and they were kind of hoarding their food, with all good intention, I'm hoarding it for my family, you know. This little boy comes forward and he offers barley loaves. Now what we don't get in this gospel is that Barley loaves was really a poor man's food, and I mean the poorest of the poor. Most people fed barley loaves to their pigs, but here this boy has barley loaves. So they really weren't fit for human consumption, and yet this boy offers them up. And we would say, well, he didn't offer up the best then. He's offering food that's fit for pigs. The irony is that's the best he had as a poor boy. That was the only food he had, and he offers it up. And what's amazing is that Jesus takes this food that's fit only for the poorest of the poor, barely fit for pigs, and once they have enough to feed everybody, he says, collect it so that the scraps may not be wasted. He has taken this food that is fit only for pigs and made it so precious that he doesn't want any crusts left on the ground. That's what he does with our first fruits. The food was fit for pigs, but it was the very best this poor kid could offer. 
And because he offered it so freely, God takes it and transforms it not only into something so precious that not a crust can be wasted, but he transforms it into something that is so abundant that it is able to nurture and feed thousands. Something we could not do ourselves but it's only because that child offered the best. And so the question we have to ask ourselves is, when we refer to God with respect to our prayer, with respect for what we do for the church, with respect to our worship, when we offer those things to God, are we saying, this is the least I offer you? At least I'm doing this. Or do we give him the first fruits? Do we say, no, I offer you the best. I offer you my first and freshest hour of the day. That when I come to Mass, I make sure I have enough time that I can come in and pray before the Mass begins. And that I can stay and offer Thanksgiving after the Mass has concluded. Do I make time for prayer during the week or to read scripture? Or is it something that I do when I'm bored and I have a few moments left over? Do I only pray the rosary and offer my prayers when I'm driving or when I'm exercising or when I have something else that I'm doing presently? Or do I make time to set aside to cut out everything else and make the Lord my focus? This Friday is First Friday. And here's another wonderful opportunity to say, Lord, you have given me so much in extravagance. I now return to you one hour. And so I'd ask you please to think very clearly about how much time we spend with God and how much we can offer to Him, not only on First Friday in adoration, but any day that we have time to do this. If we offer our first fruits, if the phrase we use with respect to God is, at most I will, this is my extravagance that I offer back then amazing things can happen. And if we go and offer much as this little boy, we will see that not only the little we offer is transformed into something so valuable that none of it should be wasted, but we will see that many more will be nourished and touched because we so freely offer them. Here.